I'm Caitlin Walsh and I paint anatomy, fine art anatomy, um, for people who like anatomy. Something that I get asked a lot is how do I find the time to paint, especially when people find out that I have three children, um, two and five and seven currently. It's a little bit easier now that the seven year old is in school, but it's still, it's, it's, it's a tricky thing to fit in a hobby that slowly has turned into a career. Um, but fortunately, I have a whole process to, you know, I had to figure out how I was going to fit this in if I was going to make it a real thing. Um, so I actually have tips and tricks to give people. The first thing that I always say is you just, you need to self-talk and you need to tell yourself, when I'm going to do this hobby or when I'm going to paint, it doesn't have to be this epic session that's going to be like four hours and you need a babysitter or even three hours or even an entire hour. Five minutes counts. Uh, it still counts as a productive day if sometimes even just setting up the art. That's, that's just what I'm going to get done that day, and it's fine. It's five minutes of taping down a piece of paper. Done. Check it off the list. I did my hobby. So remembering that it doesn't have to be an epic thing. It can just be a five to ten to twenty minute interval is, is very helpful. The second thing I always say is um, you got to have all your supplies in one spot so that it's an easy setup and takedown. This is especially important if you have kids because... Uh, quick up, quick down, and the kids aren't going to mess it up. So I have everything in one spot, and uh, I can get it up and up and running for like five minutes, do my ten minutes painting, and then it's done. A, a whole 15 minute thing, rather than trying to find these little pieces everywhere all over the house um, in order to set up your entire area. That's part of the reason I like watercolor, because it's, you got paint, you got a cup of water, you got your paper, you're done. And then the third thing that I tell people that's probably the most important is you got to have a treat. Because like, if my kids will go down for a nap and uh, all of a sudden, no matter what my mood was before or how much coffee I had had, a nap sounds really great for me too, like the thing that I absolutely need. So I make it so that my favorite treat of the day, uh, for me, it's, it's soda. Yes, I still drink soda in 2019. Yes, Mom, I know it's awful. Um, this is actually Sherry Coke right now in this mug. It is not coffee. But I have my favorite treat of the day, and I don't allow myself to have it until I'm set up painting. And that's the thing that if I'm not in bed, it'll make me stay up. Or if I'm taking my quick cat nap, it makes me get out of bed because, man, I just want that Mountain Dew. So then I quick set up my area. I do my 10-minute painting, and I, fit it, I have fit it into the day, and I'm done. So that's how, how, how I fit art into my life. Guilt and art and motherhood go hand in hand in hand, if that's a thing. Every second of every day, there's some level of guilt in my body. Um, I feel guilty when I am painting because I am not spending that time with kids. The only thing that makes it better is now my daughter's desk, painting desk, is right next to mine, so sometimes we'll paint side by side. But then I feel guilty about the two-year-old. Um, and then when with my kids, I, the fact that I'm not doing finishing the paintings that I've promised customers, that I'm not... Uh, doing my accounting work, that I'm not uh, painting the things that that resonate with me and, and that I actually want to paint. I may not feel guilt, but I feel angst about that. So I think anybody who's following their passion and also has kids is just, you know, a wash in a sea of guilt, and it's something you have to live with. 